What is up, y'all? It is Dad Bod here, and welcome back to my Sekiro to walk through. In the last video, we were up there, we took care of some mini bosses, and then we made our way down here, and we are about to make our way further down here into the mysterious valley. Uh, first, we pick up a spirit emblem, and if you notice, the screen is kind of shaking, the ground is rumbling. What could that possibly mean? Um, okay, a little tutorial for mid-air grappling hook. So you just jump off, grapple over here, and then um, grapple on over here and over here. We jump and duck right away into the grass because we are confronted with Mr. Snake here. He is... Uh, quite in an intimidating presence down here. This is pretty much a scripted encounter. Um, there's really only one way to go. The main thing is just to make sure that you move when he can't see you. So for example, we're ducking here in this brush. Uh, that means he can't see us. Um, we are going to have to progress that direction. You see that spirit emblem over there. Um, you have to do so while he's not looking at us. Um, if he does hit you, it's pretty much a one shot. Uh, the damage probably won't kill you in one shot, but he will most likely knock you over the edge, which the combination of the two will kill you. In fact, just for fun, I'm going to show you what happens. What's up, dude? Hey, you see me, right? Oh, hello. Snake, what happened? Snake, snake! So anyways, um, don't let that happen to you. Um, just a little example of what not to do when around a giant frozen snake thing. Um, okay, so enough messing around. This is how you get through this part. So, of course, you duck right away. He's going to be facing you off right here. You just got to kind of wait till he turns his back on you. Then you're going to jump right down there. Um, he's still looking around. I think he's going to turn the other direction. And here we go. Right under his nose. Make sure you run. It's no time to lollygag. When you look behind us, he's trying to make his way through here, but he's too fat. So, uh, as I said, there's really only one way to go. So, the only way to mess this up is if you just don't move quickly. So, you want to jump over here and dive into the the brush make sure you're crouching um he's gonna wrap around rather tightly so just be aware don't let him graze uh, across you just make sure you're kind of moving up quickly enough to where he doesn't actually touch you and then when he moves up that's your opportunity to move across to this wall which you can see the markings which indicates you can hug the wall and shimmy across a little ledge that's what we're going to do now just make sure you make that transition when he's looking the other direction so our next destination is that little tent over there. So once we get off this wall, we're going to make a mad dash there and hide inside. So we run, get inside the palanquin, which I believe is some form of uh, enclosure that is used for wedding ceremonies. And uh, if you notice, we have a death blow option here. The snake is not attacking us. He seems to be attracted to us, but we have the option to death blow his eye. We're going to do that, and he is not going to be happy with us. So go ahead and do the death blow, and we are going to run straight across there, pick up that item, try not to get hit. He's flailing around. Uh, so we just got some snap seeds. This is actually totally optional. You don't, it's not required that you get these, but they are a helpful item. So I wanted to go ahead and get them and show you that they're there. Um, they will be used at certain points in the game. And then now you want to sprint the opposite direction. Just make sure you avoid the flailing snake. As I said, there's only one way to go. So jump up here, grapple. Make sure you immediately jump up here and grapple across and do a third grapple and run to safety. So right here, he's going to try to squeeze through and get us again. But uh, we are just out of reach for him. Ooh, hello. Maybe next time. And that is the end of that encounter. So kind of creepy slash terrifying, um, but really adds to the atmosphere in my opinion. Uh, so got to grapple up here and we have some more gatching sugar and a sculptor's idol checkpoint. So 
Um, nothing I'm going to do with that right here, but there is a little guy over here that you can kill. This, again, is totally optional. You don't have to fight him. He is actually... He packs more of a punch than you would expect, and he's actually capable of poison. But just make sure you get your deflects when the opportunity presents itself. And there he goes with the poison. Uh, you see my little meter at the bottom. He fortunately did not get it all the way up, but... Um, I almost got poison. Finally killed him. The only reason why I kill this guy is because he gives you the herb catalog scrap, which actually does nothing. It really just is a descriptor, kind of adds some color to uh, what we just went through. A page torn from the Ashina herb catalog compendium of flowers and herbs, the snap seed, which is what we just picked up, the item we picked up when the right after we snapped the, stabbed the snake in the eye, uh, naturally grows in ravines and deep valleys. According to denizens of the Sunken Valley, such places are appropriate for offering oneself in marriage to the great serpent. If one wishes to become a bride, they must enter the belly of the serpent in the valley. So there's some sort of ritual that exists with the serpent. People kind of worship the serpent and offer themselves to the serpent in marriage, which if you're, I, I would assume, meaning uh, if you go into the belly of the serpent, that would mean you would kind of sacrifice yourself. Um, but uh, kind of interesting. Um, so there's an opportunity to eavesdrop here, so let's do that. A smoke signal from the great castle gate. Is it Lord Yobu? Yes, that's definitely Yobu the demon. Ashina is safe so long as that man guards her doors. Kyobu the demon. Um, actually, before we proceed, I got a gourd seed in the last episode that I have yet to turn in. So I'm going to travel back to the dilapidated temple and get myself an extra heal um, in my gourd pouch. So I will have three heals instead of two. And you never know when extra healing capacity can come in handy. All righty. Talk to Emma. All righty. Easy as that. Um, so we're going to warp right back to where we just were. Just a little side comment. If you are a veteran of the... Uh, Miyazaki, Souls, and Bloodborne type games might have noticed we're in the fourth video and we've yet to fight a proper boss. I will say this game does get started off a little bit more slowly in terms of boss encounters. Um, you know, this game does have a lot of mini boss encounters and we've done quite a few of those already, but we've yet to fight a real boss. I will say that comes to an end in this episode. Um, we are going to fight a boss and you know, as the game progresses further along, the boss encounters do become more frequent. Uh, so it becomes more normal in that regard. Uh, so we got an Akko's Sugar. Um, those come in handy for boss fights, as you might imagine. Nice little attack buff. So this guy, poor soul, doesn't even know we're here. So we can just do that to him. Oh, well, I don't even feel bad about it. So you see, we got a guy with a gun over there, a guy with a gun over there, and there are those two guys we eavesdropped on. And these big Ophi dudes are kind of a pain to kill. Um, you definitely can kill them one-on-one -on -one on a fair, in a fair fight, but being fired at from all directions uh, with gunfire is, is not going to uh, help our cause in this instance. So I'm actually just going to wait for him to sort of pass by. And I'm going to pop up and uh, stab him right in the back. Or at least that's the plan. We'll see how the execution goes. But patience is a virtue. Hopefully I can do it without that guy even noticing me, but we will see. All right, let's pop up, lock on, get the backstab. And does he notice me? Does he notice me? He does notice me, but that's okay. Just wait for him to shoot, get out of the way, and Smash R1, and you're golden. All right, this guy. So as long as you run, kind of strafe to the side. These guys with the gun, they're never going to hit you as long as you're on the move. Um, then, of course, we got this guy down here. Just a regular sword dude. Get the deflect. Keep the pressure on. And this guy is clueless. So he will be punished. All right. Got some Ungo sugar. And let us not forget the loot down here. Ceramic shard. Mibu balloon of wealth. 
and a heavy coin purse. So I think so far we've only collected light coin purses, which uh, offer 100 sen. The heavy coin purse offers 500 sen. So that is quite a bit of quite a bit of money we just got. Up here we have a another one of those remnant, which is like a it's basically a recorded past conversation that we can uh, hone in on here. So let's listen in we managed to, drive them back. to Kuro and Genichiro. The Interior Ministry's army is far too powerful. And that is why you wish to use the power of my blood. It doesn't matter how much power you obtain. You'll keep on fighting until you're a monster. Incapable of feeling pain or fear. I do not wish to corrupt the lives of men. Look at this mountain of bodies. Ashina cannot be defended by normal means. Not anymore. I could never be as strong as you, Lord Genichiro. I do not yet know what it is I should do. It has been a long time since that happened. Wait all you'd like. It'll do you no good. Okay, so a pretty uh, critical piece of lore there. Um, we get some insight into Genichiro's motives for kidnapping Kuro. We understand that he wants to raise an immortal army for Ashina because, of course, they're being invaded, and he doesn't uh, think that without that kind of edge that his troops will be able to survive the fight. Um, Kuro, on the other hand, does not want to give in to that. He has principles and does not think that Lending immortality to an entire army of soldiers would be a wise idea. In fact, he understands the corrupting influence that immortality has. And so he has chosen to not give in to those demands and um, as a result remains a prisoner. So this guy you can eavesdrop on. Poor guy. We can easily put him out of his misery. Fist full of ash, and we go up to these stairs here. This store is locked, but over here we have some pellets. I believe down here there's gonna be a guy patrolling, with which we can just do one of these and dispose of him quickly. All right. So that takes care of all the guys down here. So the only way we have left to go is up here. And uh, looky here. If you were thinking to yourself that this looks like a mighty fine area to plop a boss battle right here in the middle of the game, you would be correct. We're about to fight the first boss, Giobu, who was referenced just earlier in one of the conversations we eavesdropped on. Before we go down and fight him, I'm going to equip my Akko Sugar onto my quick items bar here, because uh, I will go ahead and use that attack buff for this fight. So without further ado, let us fight Giobu. My name is Giobu Masataka Oniwa! As I breathe, you will not pass the castle gate! Okay. Kind of refrain from attacking him there at the very beginning just to get all the dialogue in. His horse is very uh, sensitive to firecrackers. Um, you can see he's attacking us with that giant spear. Um, it is. You can, of course, deflect his attacks. I'm not doing a very good job of it right now. Um, the wind-ups are a bit uh, challenging to anticipate in time. Um, so this fight is really just a, a dance between deflecting when necessary and getting hits in when you can. Don't get too greedy with the hits because then it'll try to stab you with his spear and um, it won't go well. So get a few hits, get some deflex, and then, uh, whoops, at least try to get the deflex. I'm going to throw some firecrackers, get the stun, get a lot of hits in as a result. He's probably going to try to attack me again soon. And, uh... Let's see, I'm almost through his first phase. I'll use the Akko Sugar in his second phase. We got the first death blow. And really it's just more of the same. He, there's no transformation for the second phase. I don't think he gets any new attacks or anything. So just note that sometimes you'll get those um, prompts to grapple onto him. And that is actually a good chance to stun and get a couple free hits. So let's see if that happens again. There we go, let's grapple onto him. Then we'll get a couple hits. And then, whoops, he actually hit us. So maybe, maybe just one hit after you grapple on. There we go. Actually going to use this as an opportunity to heal up. 
Um, grapple on. Oh, I missed the grapple. The tree was in the way. That's okay. Uh, let's see. He's kind of cornered over here. So let's throw some firecrackers. Get the stun. Whoops. He knew what was up. I'm out of healing gourd usages, but fortunately, I have yet to use a resurrection. And got a stun. Let's throw some firecrackers. Oh, he ran away. But we can grapple. Try to get two hits. One, two, block. So it's really just a matter of learning the rhythm of the fight. And uh, don't get too greedy. I'm trying to get a little bit greedy just to end this fight quickly, but, you know. All right. Give you firecrackers. There we go. And get that death blow. And beware, there is a final finisher death blow that you have to do after you get the second death blow. If you do not do the finisher death blow, he will regain some health and you're going to have to get him again. So just make sure you don't miss that finisher's death blow. And we have our Shinobi execution. So since he is considered a true boss, uh, we get what's called a memory, and these can be used at a sculptor's idol to increase your attack power. So it says here, commune with the sculptor's idol and confront the memories of battle to permanently increase attack power. Gyobu Masataka Oniwa was keeper of the Ashina Castle Gate. And for our trouble, we also get the mechanical barrel, mechanical metal, uh, mechanical metal barrel that could be given to the sculptor to enable the prosthetic tool upgrades. It appears to have been made to fit perfectly inside the wrist bone of the Shinobi prosthetic. A reinforced core is sure to make a Shinobi's fangs even sharper. So, you might have noticed along the way we've been collecting some upgrade materials. So now we can finally put some of those to good use and um, upgrade some of the prosthetic. Uh, attachments that we have. Um, so, conveniently, there is a sculptor's idol right here. So let's visit it. And uh, we now can enhance our attack power because we have a memory. So let's confront the memory. And all it does is it pulls this up. You don't have to do anything else. So it says, battle, memory of an extraordinary foe. Although distant recollection of such a memory provided sustenance for the wolf, Gyobu Oniwa once led a group of infamous bandits but was defeated by Ishin, who was so captivated by his show of strength that he took him in as an Ashina warrior. Oniwa would later go on to become Genichio Ashina's most trusted retainer. So, attack power has been enhanced. Now, if you look over at our attack power on the right-hand side of the screen, you see we have two attack power instead of just one. Lucky us. Um, let's see, we can also acquire some skills here. I'm going to go ahead and get this one. Um, you know, notice this one is the one I'm going for next. It actually costs five skill points, breath of life light. What that does is it makes it so whenever we commit a death blow, we recover health every time we do a death blow, which is quite nice. Uh, if you don't have full health, um, you get a death blow, it'll recover a little bit of health. So I want that one next because, you know, it can help, uh, minimize the need for healing items. Um... I think that's about all we can do. I think we've already rested, but just to make sure... Uh, we'll go ahead and rest, and um, we will carry forward. Uh, so this unlocks the next area of the game. We're actually not going to go too far down this path, but there's one thing, one item of business that I want to take care of. Just run. There's a guy right here. Runs kind of to his side. He'll miss his, uh, he'll miss his shot. Then you want to grapple up here. Actually, for this part, we're going to want to equip the axe prosthetic. Reason being is we're going to attack some of these little impish dudes. And the ones over there have these large wooden hats that essentially function as a shield. And the axe breaks the shield in one shot and allows us to uh, get a death blow. But first things first, this guy, we're just going to sneak up behind him, get a death blow on him. And then eavesdrop on these guys. Illness is indeed grave. The land of Ashina will not last much longer. Even with Genichiro on our side. What about our other mission? Black Hat is fighting like a demon by the Serpent Valley side of the castle. Then that's where we're going next. But keep your wits about you. The Black Hat Badger won't go down without a fight. So it seems that the enemy knows that, Geni or that Ishin is in a weakened state, and so they presume this is a window of opportunity to attack. So this guy, we're just going to run up, 
get a backstab, lock onto this guy, use the axe prosthetic. Oops, he dodged it. There we go. Oh, I don't know why that didn't work, but it's not going, it's not going quite as planned, but that's okay. All right, so I got poison. I want to show you how the axe is supposed to work. I'm going to heal up first, though. Oh, come on. I'm being trolled. Oh, well. Wasn't meant to be. Oh, okay. This is this is not going uh, according to plan at all. But that's okay. That's the game. That's Miyazaki for you. If it was going according to plan, it wouldn't be Miyazaki. Um, take care of these dogs. Okay. Now this guy... Axe. Oh my gosh. Axe. There we go. Ugh. Normally, it does not take that long. Um, so you'll have to excuse that. Uh, so we get some pellets over here. And of course, we can just jump over this roof. And down here is our sculptor's idol. Um, Terrible uh, execution of that encounter notwithstanding. This is actually a very good early game gl uh, grinding loop. So basically you can execute that loop over and over again and hopefully do a little bit better than I just did. Normally that I get I get that uh, my first shot with the axe breaks his hat and I can get the, de the death blow right there. But I don't know what happened. I just couldn't get it going for some reason that time. But you can do this loop over and over again. Heal right here. And uh, especially for early game, it gives you a decent amount of skill points. So if there's something that you're trying to save up for right away, and you want to just uh, kind of grind a little bit to get there. Um, no shame in doing that. That is a good spot to do it in the early game. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's proceed up here. We're going to go around this corner. And there happens to be an item right here. Ceramic shards. And there is a merchant up here. Let's talk to him. To purchase an offering. Another one. Where you find the departed, you'll find the memorial mark. A battlefield is our paradise. Go ahead. Buy an offering. Okay. So, if you happen to not obtain the firecrackers uh, in the previous opportunity, um, we now have a gourd seed that is available for purchase. Um, this guy sells a gourd seed for a thousand sen. So, let us go ahead and sell five light coin purses and that will allow us to purchase this gourd seed which we want um where you find wherever you of course there are a limited number of gourd seeds in the game there are a total of nine gourd seeds i believe because your fully powered up pouch has 10 heals uh, and you start with one so um want to get all of the gourd seeds you can find all right let's talk to this guy Mm. Another rat. Mm. Ah, but those eyes. A starving wolf. Before I kill you, tell me your name. Tell me your name! <laughs> no name to give. You should know me all the same. You die nameless, with no one to mourn you. However... Your left arm, a prosthetic shinobi arm. It reminds me of... <laughs> That's it. A one-armed wolf. I like it. Which means Sekiro. That is what I shall name you. Who are you? <laughs> I am the Tengu of Ashina. Come, Sekiro. Care to hunt some rats with me? What? Rats have snuck into Ashina, scurrying about like they own the place. There are all kinds of rats out there, and they must be cut down. Every last one of them. It seems you have a talent for killing. Allow me to help you hone that talent. What'll it be, Sekiro? Will you hunt rats with me? Of course, we'll accept. Very well. Excellent. You'll need this if you're with me, Sekiro. Okay, rat description. Description of the rats that have snuck into Ashina. Speak to the Tengu again once the rats are dealt with. 
Rats are assessed from Simpo Temple, short statue, wear bamboo hats. Sound familiar? A number of rats are looking about, last seen around the Ashina Castle Gate. So it turns out that those guys that we just killed a few minutes ago, are they count as rats. So uh, instead of having to then depart from the sky and kill those things and then come back, we've already done that. So let's just hit OK. <laughs> the face of a rat and where it makes its home. Go and kill it. If you do, I will give you something that will aid you in battle. So, we've already done that, so we can just talk to him again. Ah, looks like you've caught yourself some rats. Yes. I knew you had a talent for killing. Wonderful. Here's your reward. Take it! And our reward is another esoteric text, which unlocks another skill tree in the game. Um, the Ashina-style skills are unlocked. A text that reads like a history of Ishin Ashina's battles. When young, Ishin fought desperately time and time again, polishing his technique in the blood of his enemies. He consolidated his learnings under the Ashina style name for the sake of his clan's dominance. This is the ways of the Ashina blade. It's our school of fighting. But there are no hard and fast rules. You just win your battles. That alone is the most important rule of the Ashina style. I hope it can be of assistance with your rat hunting. And most of all, your own battles you've yet to fight. Okay. Around here we got an item, some pellets, and an old lady. Oh, you survived. That accursed Gyobu's finally a corpse, I take it. <clears throat> that changes nothing, you know. There'll be more wars, there'll be more corpses, and deep-seated hatred will run wild. Where's all that hatred go? Haven't you ever wondered? <sighs> Guess not. Guess you haven't. That's why I pity you. And I pitied him. Where does all of that hatred go? If you notice, the old lady and this guy both mentioned kind of someone else. Um, hint that someone else is someone we've already met before. That someone else is someone who has also used the Shinobi prosthetic. If you haven't guessed yet, that someone else is our friend, the sculptor that they are referencing. Um, okay, so we already got the Ashina esoteric text from killing the rats up here. There is a secret that we ought to obtain. Uh, just jump up there, grapple up here. You'll notice the rafters kind of hanging off the ceiling there. You just got to walk around and uh, over here, and you can jump and grab it, pull yourself up. Um, and in here, we have. A prayer bead. So I think this is the first one that we found. The other ones have been a result of killing many bosses. So we have a prayer bead. Um, that is all we can do here. Um, so we are going to go ahead and use the homeward idol to warp back to the dilapidated temple. Um, if you remember from the Gyobu boss fight, we got the mechanical barrel. So we need to turn that into the sculptor so we can upgrade our prosthetic tools if we have the requisite materials. I believe we also have another gourd seed that we want to give to Emma, up our healing capacity. So just some housekeeping type stuff um, before we proceed on with the game. So let's talk to Emma first. I'm glad you've come, Master Wolf. Okay, we're at four now. Bye. And of course we can go to our friend, the sculptor. Oh. I see you've acquired something quite interesting. A mechanical barrel. It's a mechanism that can serve as the very core of the prosthetic. Hand it here. I'll fit it to the arm for you. What difference does the barrel make? With a versatile base such as this, I can use various purifying agents to further hone that fang of yours. Purifying agents? Purifying agents are materials that can be used together with the barrel. Things like gunpowder and scrap metal. So if you find something of that sort, be sure to bring it my way. Okay. 
don't think we have any new prosthetics. I don't. Yeah, we've equipped everything we have so we can upgrade. So this is the upgrade tree. Um, let's see here. We do not have enough money to get this one. Actually, first things first, I'd want to get the spinning shuriken, but we do not have enough gunpowder for that. So we'll have to come back a little bit later. With the mechanic, I can use various purifying agents to further hone that fang of yours. So if you find something of that sort, be sure to bring it my way. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So before we proceed along that path we were just at, where we killed the rats, we're actually going to go back to the Harada estate. And now that we have um, our increased attack power, and we have four gourd pouch uses, um, I think we're ready to take on the rest of the Harada estate. So let's let's go back right where we left off. And uh, we're going to go all the way to the end of this area. Um, there are some, some sur surprises in store for us. Uh, there is another boss that we're going to fight in the Harada estate. Um, so lots to take care of over here. First things first, you can grapple up over here. You notice that there's some enemies patrolling over here, but uh, we are a shinobi, so we're going to try to avoid detection. Um, there's actually a secret area over here. Uh, very easy to miss, but you want to make sure that we get everything we can possibly get. So make sure you go over here, grapple up, and there is a treasure carp right over here. Uh, make sure you get his scale. Um, and then up here, we have an item down here. Contact medicine. Powdered medicine with poisonous effects used through the ages by Sh Ashina Shinobi. A weak poison status abnormality is inflicted upon consumption. By inflicting a weak poison on oneself, all other forms of poison become ineffective. Some Shinobi also use a medicine for a specific technique. Poison is said to expand the mind. So basically, it inflicts a very weak poison on yourself, but then it makes you immune to stronger forms of poison. So here we uh, can do a wall jump, taking a page out of Mario 64's book. Um, and if you remember when we spoke with Anayama the peddler, the um, bandit, in our previous outing to um, the Harada estate, you notice that uh, the bandits, they did set the place on fire. And he also mentioned a three-story pagoda that might have a secret inside. Well, there, ladies and gentlemen, is our three-story pagoda. If you have a keen eye, you will notice there is a purple ninja up here. He is no joke. He is tough. Um, he does a lot of quick attacks in succession. You're going to have to be on your A game to deflect his attacks. Um, he's, of course, susceptible to firecrackers. Uh, but just make sure you stay on him. The key is to stay on him as with many other enemies in this game, is to stay on them and not let them recover their posture because breaking breaking posture is such an important facet of this game. If you let if you let, if you leave your enemies alone and let them recover their posture, then it's going to be a, you're going to have a much harder time. So as soon as you move forward, he's going to notice, come down, get right on him, start attacking, make sure you block his sword attacks. He also has a lot of kicking attacks, that sweep attack there. Um, I want him to do, he has a combo that he does where Oops, that is actually that kick that he does can actually be Makiri countered um, and a sweep attack. Of course, you want a Goomba stomp uh, and if, do not let him do that because he will recover his posture. I want him to do his. There we go. This is his combo and it always ends. Ooh, I somehow he must have caught me uh, off balance, but I will resurrect. No worries. I'm going to try to get him to do it again because I think he kicked me off the edge there and that's what messed me up. Um, I want to do that combo again. Without dying, of course. Oh my gosh. That's what I get for trying to show off. Um, but it's all good. We will go right back there. Um, as I said, he is no joke. But he is guarding something important, so... You're going to go right back over there. Waste no time. Um, I am going to try to get him to do that combo because that combo, if you can get all of the deflex on it, it is a pretty big blow uh, to his posture. <clears throat> it 
turns out it's much harder to fight in this game when you're talking at the same time, but I want to make sure that you guys are well equipped for all of these fights to uh, know what to expect and know how to react as well. So I'm going to do less talking this time, but there we go. There we go. That's the combo I'm looking for. And you get the one, two, three, four, and the Makiri counter, his kind of thrust kick. Oh, that, that tears him up. So here he goes again. One, two, three, four, Makiri counter. There you go. That gets him really good. And you see how, how much easier it was that time when I'm actually deflecting when I should be deflecting. Uh, I got some more scrap iron. Uh, it's a upgrade material. And what is it exactly that he was guarding? The Mist Raven's Feathers. A bundle of Mist Raven Feathers can be fitted to the Shinobi prosthetic to create a prosthetic tool. In Usui Forest, far to the north of Ashina, live many mysterious birds of prey. The Mist Raven is the only one to have eluded capture by all who have tried. Should you somehow manage it, you'll find it gone, only feathers in your grasp. So we can take this back to the sculptor. He will fit it to our prosthetic. It is actually a prosthetic tool that I never really use. Um, I mean, there is, of course, lots in this game that, you know, many different play styles, many different uh, ways to approach the game and just kind of my play style. I've never really adapted to using that prosthetic very much. But of course, it is there for you to experiment with and do with as you like. You by no means have to approach this game the same way that I do. So you can see I locked onto a guy down there. Normally, such a high fall would cause damage. But if you do a death blow from above, you avoid all of that. Does not even see us coming. These guys have flaming bows and arrows, so make sure you don't let them shoot you. Um, come on. You're not getting away from me. Okay. And that guy, of course, is a pain. You really no way around fighting him, but we're, we're going to take care of all these guys first. Lots of bows and arrows. Um, just run away from them. And they're not going to hit you. That guy's going to hit me, but that's okay. I can take one shot. And get this death blow. And you can see why I want that ability where I recover health on each death blow. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to take on those guys quite yet. Um, I'm going to get all these other guys first. All right. There is more. There's this guy. You go up here. There's a guy waiting down here that you can death blow from above. And, of course, these guys patrolling that have their back turns to us. Shame on them. Take care of them rather easily because they weren't paying close attention. All right, get all of the loot. Leave nothing behind. Um, so that's where we grappled up earlier. There's another grapple point right up here. This takes us back. Oh, is that the... Uh, oh, I didn't think he was going to come all the way down here. All right, there's an item up here that we want to get. Dousing powder treats the burn status effect. Um, and you see there's a couple guys waiting for us over there. So let us drop into the water. We can grapple up here and hopefully catch them by surprise. Maybe not, but it's worth the attempt. Uh, let's see, where's the other guy? There he is. Oh, he noticed us. Oh, I meant to jump up there and get him. Oh, well. Kind of wasted those firecrackers, but... It's all good. Hey. All right. This guy. No trouble at all. Um, does he notice I'm here? What is he doing? Is he, like, fighting somebody else? Or is he, like... I can't even tell what he's doing. He's, like, swinging at somebody. I have no idea what his deal is. All right, I'm just going to fight him. It's kind of similar to Gyobu. Get a couple hits in, then get in deflect mode. Almost got him. There we go. Not too bad. 
I'm actually going to heal up with pellets, leave my full uh, gourd usages available. I believe there are guys with shields up here. There's one of them. So, of course, we want to use our handy dandy axe to bust through the shield with one shot. And there should be another shield fellow. There he is. He never approached us. Easy as pie. Fistful of ash. Uh, let's see here. I think that's everything. All right, so let's trek on up here. And here we have it. Owl, our adoptive father. Father. Uh, it's you. I'm afraid I made a bit of a blunder. Perhaps the years have finally caught up with me. Ah, don't bother tending to my wounds, no point. It's too late. Uh, Wolf, you must take this. All right, the Hidden Temple Key. Secret temple is located at the very back of the Harada estate. Two, the Lord is absolute. Defend him with your life. If he is taken, bring him back at any cost. This is the key to the secret temple in the estate mansion. You'll find him. The divine heir going through the front is not an option. You'll never get past the fire. Yes, sir. Perhaps the cliff's just outside of here. Yes. Return to the estate entrance. You look for a side route along the cliffs. Take the back entrance through the cemetery. That's your way in. Understood. Wolf, never forget the Iron Code. Yes. The master is absolute. Wolf, protect your master with your life. <laughs> <laughs> Father. Not in good shape is Owl. Um, so, of course, Kuro has been captured. It is our sworn duty to protect him. So we're on our way to go rescue Kuro. Um, so this is the way forward. You see that grapple point down there. That is exactly where we're headed. And there's another one across. Let's get that. And we just keep on going. Until we get, uh, until we get down here. Um... If you remember in one of the previous videos, I grappled up to this tree branch and said you can skip part of the level and it takes you right here. You were absolutely free to do that, but you would miss getting the temple key from Owl up there. Um, so that's, of course, why I wanted to go through the whole thing so we can get the temple key because the temple key is essential to clearing out this level. Um, be on guard. There are some enemies over here. They're not all that bright, so sneak up, get a death blow. And then, uh, let's see, there's dudes in there. I think you can eavesdrop, yeah. See what they have to say. I bet you can find totally out of control by now. Yeah, if anyone's gonna get out, their only choice is to use this cave. Don't let a single rat escape. Lord Zuzo's orders. I know. I don't mind at all. I can't stand selfish bastards who leave everyone else behind at the first sign of danger. Poor guys. Don't stand a chance. Thank you, Mr. Shield Man, for blocking the bow and arrow. All right, here we go. Let's take care of this guy. And the threat has been taken care of. Just like that. Easy as pie. Um, okay. So let us carry forward through this area. I believe that is everybody. And we have acquired all of the loot. I don't believe there's any items around here to pick up. But just to make sure... Yep, we're good. Okay, so we can go through here. This is the cave. 
Um, let's see. And we have another area to do wall jumps. So, climb on up here. And here we go. We're at the estate, which is consequently on fire. Um, so we got a sculptor's idol. Unfortunately, we do not yet have five skill points, which is sad. Um, so we can't get that death blow health recovery skill yet, but you know, we'll, we'll do just fine without it for now. Um, so side note, you remember, um, uh, you know, Al is our adoptive father. It turns out that Genichiro is also it's kind of a foil to our character. He's also adopted. He was adopted by Ishin. He was orphaned as well. And um, so Ishin uh, adopted um, Genichiro and Al adopted us, Sekiro. Um, so it's interesting to, to keep that in the back of your mind and see how it plays out with the story. One thing I like to do is I like to lure some of these guys away, kind of going with the fight, fight one on one if at all possible strategy. Um, these guys with the arrows are quite annoying though, so I'm gonna go ahead and take one of them out. And then immediately run back here. Because when you're running away, the guys with the arrows can still hit you and it is kind of annoying. All right, come on. Stop playing around, come at me. Do a charge attack to get things going. Take care of him easily. These guys with the club axe things, man, they annoy me. Because they're hard to, because they still get hits in, and it's it's hard to tell like when your hit's gonna disrupt their attack pattern and when they're just gonna be able to attack straight through you attacking. It's hard to tell which is which, but uh, anyway, no mind. I got him anyway. Um, this last guy with the torch. Oh, I didn't notice the bow and arrow guy over there. That's my fault. Oh, and he stabbed me as well. All right. If you hadn't noticed by now, the death blow animation gives you invisibility frames. So as long as you're death blowing someone, you cannot be hurt. Good thing to keep in the back of your mind when you're fighting a group of enemies. Uh, death blows make you invincible. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a pellet. <clears throat> I might find some more pellets along the way to max me back out at three. So I'd rather use that than a gourd, which I'm not gonna get back unless I rest. I think there's an enemy in here somewhere. Um, there's also some good loot as well. Uh, there might be another guy in here. I can't remember. We got some more divine confetti. There is a guy in here. So that's what we came in here for. We want, the, we want that divine confetti. The divine confetti helps pretty enormously. If we can get a backstab on this guy, that would be... Nope. Uh, uh. He's a club dude. I, want, I don't want to fight him straight up. He's probably going to hit me because I suck at fighting these guys without getting hit. There we go. Perfect. Um, okay. So I think that takes care of that. No more items in here. We got our divine confetti. Um, so the next thing. Got all those guys. Ceramic shard. There's a couple enemies over here that we're going to take care of before we move forward. See, that guy's got his back turned. You can actually sneak around and do that to him. Walk onto this guy, do a thrust attack. Take care of him. And a light coin purse for our trouble. Um, so, you notice there's some guys over here. Uh, and you notice that guy with a giant sword. That is the next mini boss that we're gonna fight. He is actually quite tough. He is not one to be taken lightly. Um, and you see, there's this guy over here. He actually helps us in the fight. Uh, he may or may not survive. I don't really care if he survives or not. Doesn't make a difference to me. I wanna see if I can lock on any of these guys from afar. See if I can troll them with shurikens. I can't. Uh, let's see if I can get him. Stand up. There we go. <clears throat> to the extent that I can kill these guys without luring the mini boss out, that is ideal. Um, 
Come on. Because fighting them all at once with the mini boss is a difficult task. Uh, can I target you? Yep, there we go. Come out here. Oh, he's a bow and arrow guy. There we go. Took care of him. Got this guy. See if he'll come out and fight me. Come on. Is he a bow and arrow guy? No, he's not. Come on. Come on. Come on. No? Oh, there you go. Oh, that's not allowed. That's not allowed either. Is the mini boss going to notice me? He is. Yes. Okay. So there's the mini boss, Juzo the Drunkard. Um, notice his other guys surrounding him have not, uh, have not, have decided to not come out and play, which is perfectly okay with me. So, same tactic that we used against um, the uh, Shinobi Hunter. Run away until his life gauge disappears, and then you can get a free death blow on him, take one of his two health bars away. Um, I will point out, you can't do that twice in a row, because if you run away, get a free death blow, and then run away again and try to get another free death blow, it... it his health gauge completely refills. It only allows you to get the first death blow on him. You can't use this tactic repetitively. Where did he go? Oh, he's all the way over there. Okay. I messed that up. Rinse and repeat. There we go. Let's try to do it right this time. Okay, there he is. I'll lock onto him. He is a tough mini boss, I will say. His attacks are quite powerful, and he can poison you. Um, and he can grab you. He has a nasty grab attack. And if you're not good with your deflects, he does lots of damage, and that's his poison spit. Oh, he almost got the poison. Then you see he drinks that, and he spits it back out at you. And then he, oh, he got the poison that time. I'm gonna hit him with fire. No, but I was too far away for the firecrackers. That was a fail. Big fail. But it's okay. Oh! Okay, whatever. The poison got to us. I'm actually gonna resurrect. And then this guy is going to come to my aid and take the heat off. And give me some free shots. But be careful not to die again, because that will be actual death. But he is susceptible to firecrackers. See if that other guy can get his attention again. There you go. Thank you, sir. Oh, he broke my posture. Do some firecrackers. There we go. Got the death blow. Thank you, sir. Unrefined sake. And a prayer beat. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, there's a couple other guys up here that we're going to need to take care of. I think there's one over here, too, hiding. Nope. There's a couple dudes with shields. No problem at all, but you can see why you don't want to take all these guys on at the same time as the mini boss, because that spells trouble. And this guy celebrates. That fight was hard on this old body. Go on ahead. He can die. Uh, it really makes no difference on the game if whether he lives or dies, but he is a good help in that fight, as you can see. So take advantage of him. Um, so we can go in here. There's some items around. Some more dousing powder. Some pellets to restock our stash. And, of course, there's a couple enemies around the corner here. 
not at all difficult. As you can see, just kind of roughed them up real quick. Um, one thing to bear in mind, we have... Whoops, what the item. Uh, we have a secret shinobi door. You can hug the wall here. It is quite uh, disguised, but some secret loot back here that we don't want to miss. Another light coin purse around here. Leave some more defiant divine confetti. And in here, the main attraction, we have another prayer bead, which brings us up to three of four. Unfortunately, we're not going to get the fourth one before the next boss that we fight. But, um, you know, makes us closer than we were before, at least. So let's hit up this trap door. And these doors just break. I think there's some more loot around here. Mibu Balone of Soul. Is there anything in here? I can't remember. Nope, that is everything. So we have this old lady. If you have a good memory, you might remember talking to an old lady who gave us a bell that brought us here in the first place. This be her. might need you, Rogue Shinobi. Go to him, will you? Okay. So right next to her, we have a Sculptor's Idol. We're going to go ahead and activate that. Rest up, get our resurrection back, get our healing usages back. And uh, unfortunately, we only have four attack power. We still cannot get our uh, skill that we want, but... We will get it before too long. Um, speaking of too long, this video has gone on long enough, so I think I'm going to go on and cut it here. Uh, this will be the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have found this series to be a huge help for those of you who are just now trying to get into this game. It is very challenging, but very rewarding, so it's good to come in well-equipped, knowing uh, what you're in for and knowing what's in store. So, hope you have a great day. Take care. Take care of yourself. Join the squad by subscribing to the channel and leave a like and a comment to this video as well. Really appreciate you guys' support. Have a good one.